Hello everybody, in this video we'll be looking at mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is another quantitative technique and this technique measures the molecule's mass to charge ratio, that is the mass of the molecule divided by its charge. The main purpose of mass spectrometry is to provide information on the size of the molecule, in other words its molecular mass or molar mass. And this gives indirect information on the number of carbon atoms in a particular organic molecule. The process undertaken during mass spectrometry can be summarized by this diagram. A sample molecule undergoes ionization by removing its electrons. Through the removal of electrons, the sample molecule is converted into positive ions, and this is usually in different sizes. These positive ions are then sorted by the different sizes, which is then analyzed in detector at the very end of the mass spectrometry machine. We will now look at this process in more detail. In the very beginning of mass spectrometry, the sample that we want to analyze is vaporized and turned to a gas through the use of heat. Then, a device called an electron gun, which can shoot and bombard electrons at very high speed at the organic sample, is used to remove electrons from the vaporized sample. This produces positive ions. And this step here can be demonstrated in the first process. Through the removal of electrons from the oxygen atom, a molecule of acetone, a ketone molecule, is converted into a positive ion. Upon the formation of this positive ion, it can undergo further chemical reactions to produce smaller fragments of the molecule. This is usually because the positive ion itself is rather unstable. The process of ionization also has the ability to break a molecule into fragments by interfering with the covalent bonds that make up the molecule. In other words, in the first step, through the use of the electron gun, we have ionized our organic molecule into a molecule of the same size by charged and smaller fragments that make up the original molecule, which are both charged as well. Now, the ionized fragments that were positively charged are then accelerated in an electric field. The electric field is orientated such that the negative end is further away from the positive ions. And because positive charges, are attracted towards negative charges, the negative end of the electric field will accelerate the positive ions so that they are traveling at very high speed. The ion fragments are accelerated, then enter a magnetic field in which they are deflected, shown by the curved path in this diagram. Now, the radius of deflection of each of the ions depends on the ion's mass to charge ratio. Remember that in the very first step of ionization, we have produced molecules of different sizes. And because they have different sizes, when they enter the magnetic field, the radius of deflection of the curved path will be different, such that the radius of curvature is proportional to the mass of the ion, but inversely proportional to the charge. It's important to note that all the ions have the same charge of positive one. So the only difference here that separates the ions when they are in the magnetic field is the differences in mass. Upon separating and being sorted by the mass in the magnetic field, the ion fragments are detected and the intensities are measured. The intensity in the mass spectrum relates to the number of each ion fragment that was detected at the very end of the mass spectrometer. In a typical mass spectrum of a molecule, there is a base peak and a molecular ion peak. The base peak refers to the signal that we detected with the highest intensity. In this case, for the molecule of acetone that we analyzed, it is one of the fragments that we saw before. The second feature is a molecular ion peak, and this is a signal that's due to the unfragmented molecular ion, that is, the ion that was produced simply by removing the electron from the original compound itself. The molecular ion peak provides information on the molecular mass of the organic compound. So in this case, the mass to charge ratio of the molecular ion peak is 58. And since the charge of the ion is always plus one, this tells us the mass of the compound is 58 grams per mole. And this is the, exactly the same number as the molar mass of acetone. The molecular ion peak is therefore the most important feature of the mass spectrum, because it directly tells us the molecular mass of a sample we are analyzing. You may have noticed that there's a smaller signal to the right of the molecular ion peak. This is called the m plus 1 peak. It is a small peak of exactly one mass to charge unit to the right of the molecular ion peak. 
This is due to the presence of a carbon-13 isotope in organic compounds. Carbon-13 is a rather rare isotope with roughly 1% relative abundance. So when a carbon-13 isotope is present in an organic molecule, it gives rise to a variant with one additional m to z ratio. In this case for acetone, this ratio corresponds to a number 59. The m plus 1 peak in a mass spectrum is usually ignored when analysing a compound as it doesn't provide any useful information when ascertaining the identity of a particular sample. This concludes the video on mass spectrometry.